And now Channel 4 Schools' current affairs programme for young people, first edition. Material for pupils on school dinners featured in the programme can be found in the education section of yesterday's Guardian. Hello and welcome to First Edition. In a week where the Nigerian government executed nine people, including the famous writer Ken Sarawiwa, the Commonwealth leaders who tried to stop the killings and failed face worldwide condemnation. We report on why it happened. Celebrating School Dinners Week, we find out how to cook food that's both delicious and good for you and ask why can't it be done by all schools? And role models, what are they? And when are they good and bad for you? We investigate. Nigeria's military government is under attack after the execution of nine activists from Ogoniland, the tiny, desperately poor region of Nigeria where Shell has been taking oil from the land. International protesters say Shell has left only pollution behind and given too little back to the population. The protesters accuse the Nigerian government of brutal oppression. This is the last film of African writer Ken Sarawiwa. Two weeks ago, he appeared in front of Nigerian judges and was sentenced to death for the murder of four local politicians. He said he was innocent. No possibility whatsoever that I or Mossad would ever have planned any such action. But last week, Mr. Sarawiwa and eight other men were executed by the Nigerian government. The country's leader, General Sani Abasha, ordered the executions. Nigeria is run by the army rather than by an elected government. Mr. Sarawiwa was killed because he opposed their rule. He was a member of the Agoni people, a small group who live in southern Nigeria. Mr. Sarawiwa was angry about the way oil companies had polluted the land here. The government didn't like this criticism and it accused Mr. Sarawiwa of taking part in the murder of four other Agoni leaders. Other people supported Mr. Sarawiwa's claim that the trial was unfair. They were held in custody in appalling conditions without access to anyone or any lawyer for nine months. Even when they had that access, it was only in the presence of senior military officers. News of his death shocked the world. At a meeting in New Zealand, leaders of the Commonwealth, countries which were once British colonies, tried to stop the executions, but they failed. So the South African president, Nelson Mandela, and the other leaders decided to suspend Nigeria from the Commonwealth. Some people want the country to face even heavier punishment. Nigeria lives from its oil. Almost 90% of its money comes from selling oil to other countries. By cutting off this trade, the world could hit the military leaders where it hurts in their wallets. Very clearly, the Nigerian oil wealth goes into the pockets of the narrow clique ruling Nigeria, and they are the ones who would suffer. Oil companies have been criticized too for working with the military government, but Nigeria itself is unhappy about the way it's been treated. What has been done in respect of my country would stand as selective, discriminatory, and grossly unfair. Commonwealth leaders hope their action will help bring Nigeria to its senses. Others want to take their protest even further. People in Germany and Britain are upset at the death of Mr. Sarawiwa and his friends. Now they want us to stop buying things from companies like Shell, which deal with Nigeria. Peter Morgan, First Edition, Central London. Food, glorious food, sang Oliver Twist and went on to ask for more. Is that what you think of your school dinners? Or do you belong to the growing band of pupils who bring in packed lunches or go out to the chippy round the corner? Well, either way, experts say children aren't eating healthily enough with dangerous long-term results. Charlotte Fadipi has been down to the canteen. Chips, chips and more chips. Every week we eat thousands of kilos of chips at school. And when we're tired of chips, we go on to cakes and biscuits. 95 a pineapples. 
Research shows that we eat less fresh fruit and vegetables than children in the rest of Europe. Experts warn this can cause heart disease and other serious health problems when we grow up. If you eat too much fat now, when you're 50 or 60, you might die early. So start eating a healthy diet now. And that means don't eat chips every day, eat them once or twice a week. And tell your school, please give us lots of fresh green vegetables and give us lots of fruit. Nearly four million school meals are served in Britain every day. Jacket potatoes, pizza and burgers are the favorite. But what about fresh fruit and vegetables? And can we have a school dinner that's delicious and nutritious? Well, at Billericay School in Essex, we decided to design our own school dinner. I'd like ice cream for starters. Tomato soup, tuna pasta for starters. For main course, I'd like to have uh, beef burger and chips. Chips and a burger. I'd like roast beef for my main course. Barbecue ribs and chips. For pudding, I'd like jelly and ice cream. Chocolate cake. I'd have banana and custard. That's a tall order with hardly a healthy option in sight for school cook Nicola Simmons. She was one of the winners of the National School Cook of the Year contest. Well, we actually cheat. Uh, what we actually do is when we make pies and things, we use wholemeal flour um, and we often use wholemeal pasta, spinach pasta, brown rice and things like this. And the children actually don't even realise that they're, they're eating these things. School dinners are worth £800 million to the catering industry. But in 1980, the government said schools no longer had to meet diet standards, although they will give them guidelines next year. So the private companies which make many of our school dinners are not forced to cook healthy meals. And one cookery writer says some schools are just lazy. There is so much they could do. Wonderful vegetables, different fruits, and particularly at this time of year, there's a whole range of glorious different apples and apple varieties that we could be serving on our school meals. You don't see them, you just see imported Granny Smiths, imported Golden Delicious. It's so dull. Dino the Dinosaur may have been visiting schools this week to promote healthy eating, but it's going to take more than a seven-foot monster to change our monstrous diet of chips with everything. Charlotte Fadipi, First Edition, Essex. One of the youngest supermodels, Jodie Kidd, has been in the news quite a lot recently. Last year, she was still at school. This year, she hit the catwalks and caused a sensation. Now, she's taking a break from modelling and has gone back home to put on weight. She's been criticised for being far too thin and setting a bad example to teenagers for whom she's a role model. Jamie and Katie Lee from Manchester are interested in role models. Here's their report. Supermodels aren't the only role models in young people's lives. Every day we are bombarded with pictures from the media. So what exactly is a role model? To find out, we went to Manchester University to talk to a psychologist. Role models are people we identify with. And we choose the people we identify with, for, hopefully for their good points. We, t we choose, uh, say, a, a pop star because we would like to be a pop star. We'd like to have the fame and the fortune and so on. Or a footballer because we'd like to have their skills. They can be a teacher at school or somebody at a, a football club, where, an amateur football club, where you know, your, your coach, perhaps. I mean, our parents are our role models in many cases. Do you think the way role models behave affects children? If a footballer, for instance, is your role model, then you want to f play football like him. But unfortunately, he may have other aspects to his character that other people wouldn't want you to copy quite so accurately. Is it good to have a role model? It's not a question of whether it's good to have them. It's questions on how good the ones that you choose are for you. When I was speaking to my friends about their role models, they said that it was mainly pop stars like Eternal. I play the piano, and so, my role model is probably Scott Joplin, who was a pianist, and I named my hamster after him. As Cliff said, not all role models have to be famous. And for me, that's true, because one of my role models, probably my main role model, is my piano teacher, Mr Coulthard. I support Arsenal Football Club to the great annoyance of all my friends because they all support Manchester United. I don't really have any role models in particular, but obviously I admire all the players. In this appropriately named magazine, Football Heroes, they feature players such as Vinnie Jones, hardly the sort of person your parents want you idolising. Footballers are possibly the most popular choice of role model for boys. 
This must